Hola, mi gente. What is up, everybody? How's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Channel Chasers. Um, sorry for the delay. Honestly, I got hit with a really bad cold that knocked my ass out for like almost a week and a half. Um, so, unable to record, but we are back like we never left. Of course, joining me as always is my friend, my co-host, my self-proclaimed sidekick, Brian Kersey. How are you doing tonight, Brian? Hello, people. I'm okay. Uh, I'm currently in quarantine and it's messing with me a little bit, but I'm keeping on trucking. Wait, but like, I, so I never actually asked you, like, quarantine because you ha you're positive or quarantine just as a precaution? Precaution and uh, it's work. Work is making oh. me do it as a precaution and I can't leave the house. I can't even leave the house. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. gotcha. Uh, so, yeah, today, uh, this week, we will be talking about a show that I've been anticipating for about a year now. Maybe a little over a year. Uh, and that is, of course, Selena the Series. Starring, uh, if you guys remember the hit Nickelodeon show, Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide. You guys remember Susie, Susie Crabgrass? You know, she, did a, she spent a little time on Walking Dead also. Well, she is here, and she is great. Um, and we'll, uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about that. Honestly, there isn't really a point in the spoiler section because this is a biopic series. So, I mean, if you know Selena's story, you know how the story goes. So, really, there is no a point in us doing our normal 15 minutes of spoiler-free stuff. It's literally just Selena's story, uh, but told instead of in a uh, movie format like it did uh, back in the 90s with the J-Lo movie. It's uh, actually a full-length series, which is actually a two-part miniseries, which, uh, you know, a lot of people were confused because for some reason, season one ended in a cliffhanger. And it's just like, oh, okay, okay, it's, it's a two-parter, and it's all already filmed. So it's not like they're, like, are we going to, is it going to get renewed? No, it's already renewed. It was confirmed for both parts. It's just they wanted to split it into two parts all right. and cramming it all into one. I get that, but also we're going to get into that. Uh, but yeah, if you did want a spoiler warning, rah, 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 spoiler warning. Yep, spoiler alert, she dies at the end. Well, not the end here, but, you know, she dies at the end. Unfortunate, but yes. Um, um, so, And this like, isn't like, this isn't like John dies at the end. This is real life and it's sad i mean yeah like i said this is a biopic series so like it there's no real point in it like you know having spoilers uh you know her story has been out for well over 20 years now um close to 25 because she actually died the year i was born which is like kind of crazy um because you know um my, my mom is my mom has even told this story like you know she's she played the music all throughout the house you know uh, while, um, you know, she was pregnant with me, and then she dies the year I was born. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um, um, but I guess, like, in substitute for the, like, the spoiler section, I kind of just want to talk about, like, Selena herself, you know, Selena Catania Perez, uh, one of, if not, uh, you know, the most iconic, uh, you know, Tejano, you know, Latin singers just in his music history. Uh, she broke a lot of barriers, man. She made it possible for, you know, Latin pop crossover to happen. Uh, you could tell that she was very much influenced by the pop stars that came before her, you know, from the States, like Paula Abdul, Janet Jackson, um, mm -hmm. all of those and the like, you know, you could tell from her style, her energy, her presentation. Um, but of course, being that she is a Mexican heritage, um, one of the biggest markets that, you know, they could make a name for themselves, you know, her band was the Tejano market, you know, the, the um, you know, Mexican, um, 
music uh, music market. Um, and if it wasn't for Selena, we wouldn't have artists like, you know, a Bad Bunny or a J Balvin or a Pitbull or even, you know, people like a Cardi B um, or J Lo for that matter. Uh, you know, people like that, they owe all of that, their success to, you know, someone like Selena for paving the way, right? Like, mm-hmm. they made it, po- uh, she made it possible for people, uh, people like, uh, you know, us who, the traditional, like, milk toast, you know, white boy pop stars or white girl pop stars to really break out there and, you know, not, not just, you know, be stuck in a box, you know, just by our culture, right? Just because we're Mexican doesn't mean we have to make Mexican, but that also doesn't mean that Mexican music can't also slap. Uh, so. Yeah. And, uh, even to quote the own show, uh, she, she's Mexican, but she's also American and wanted to show both sides Mm -hmm. and represent both sides. And I think it's really cool, right? Because like a lot, a lot of people kind of, uh, you know, who don't really know her story, like was in this very like traditional Hispanic family, like spoke fluent Spanish, blah, 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 blah. But no, actually, she was raised mostly, you know, speaking English, and she didn't actually know that much Spanish until she had to start getting into the music business and was, you know, obviously being interviewed by a lot of the Spanish stations. So, you know, she actually didn't know that much Spanish, and she was pretty bad at it, Um, which is something I find uh, I take a lot of comfort in because, you know, I can speak it, and I can understand it, but it's not, like, super, super fluent. I can hold a conversation. Um, and I can, you know, ask a basic directions and all all the stuff that's necessary, you know, to, to speak. But like, it's not like I I could like hold an entire lecture or like, you know, do a podcast in Spanish. Although, like fun fact about our analytics, we'll peek behind the curtain. We do actually have a, a decent sized audience in Mexico for some reason. So, sup? Uh this is gonna sound really white, but hola. But yeah, no, it's uh, it, it's pretty cool. Um, and uh, again, the international reach of Selena cannot be understated. Like, uh, for a lot of big artists. So I, you know, I just want to take the time to like really, just you know, give her her flowers. I mean, of course, it's tragic that her life was cut short and ended oh, far yeah. too soon. But um, you know, she's, she's one of the greats. She's up there with like Die Too Soon with a lot of the greats like uh like it, Brit it's Brittany it's Murphy. Kinda, it's kinda crazy because you know, um of course Selena dies in ninety four and literally five years later, um someone who was kind of who has like the black uh, black Selena uh ends up dying tragically as well. Um Aaliyah. Yep. She died in 99. Also, that's true. And also around that time, you had the death of Kurt Cobain. Yep. Um, who also died too soon. Yeah. And unfortunately, that is a that is a problem that's still happening today. I mean, uh, just recently, uh, Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. I mean, well, Chadwick Boseman. I mean, not not to downplay. I know he's but, not a singer, but no. But I, I was saying, at least with Chadwick, it was of natural causes, and like he at least had time to like prepare. So that that yeah, at least good. It wasn't just a you know a sudden death, and you know, um, because like with with of course Aaliyah and Selena, and or obviously Kirk as well. Um, there there's sudden tragic circumstances that were out of their control in one aspect or another. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, um, and that, that that's kind of the, uh, that's one of the curses of being like famous, right? Like, I mean, we see that a lot. And I mean, especially like this year in the hip hop world, it's happened a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've got Juice World, you've got 
XXXTentacion, you've got, um, you know, you've got um, Pop Smoke, uh, a lot of people uh, well, just and uh, senselessly losing their lives. And uh, if you also want to go back to, like, the rock world, we also this year lost Chester Beddingfield. Was that this year? I think so. Was that really? Th- That's not... Dude, there's no way that was this year. I swear that was like either last year or two years ago. There's no way it was this year. Did we really lose? Oh, like, wait. I know that was Shit. the same year Anthony no. Bourdain. Yeah, that was that was the last that was the same he year Anthony three Bourdain years died. Ago. Damn. I was gonna say, yeah. I was gonna say there's no way it was this year because that was the same year Anthony Bourdain died. Damn. Well shit, my bad, but still the whole gone too soon thing oh yeah no uh, agreed agreed but yeah um my bad so, and no disrespect meant but yeah so let's go ahead and talk about the show so essentially this first part of the show uh is more focused on selena the person and kind of her rise to icon status and mm-hmm. like you know how she started her life with her family and, um, you know, basically like the foundations of her, her musical talent and like how that was fostered her early days with the band and stuff like that. Um, this is kind of where we were kind of run into a problem. And uh, this honestly isn't a fault of the directors or anything like that. It's just the fact that um, of course, because, the uh, the Cantania family was very private. Um, there isn't really much information on like the early days of Selena y los um, um, I mean, obviously the Cantania family um, was involved in this, which is why you know this particular show got a lot of press because this is the um, this is one of the one of two adaptations that actually has like the full blessing of the Cantania family. Um, so, um, obviously, the other adaptation being the J Lo movie, which, um, if you guys didn't actually, back in the day when that movie came out, there was a huge controversy over that movie because Jennifer Lopez is Puerto Rican and, of course, Selena is Mexican. So, like, there was a whole, there was a whole big. Because uh, you know, there there there's a lot of mm-hmm. like inter, um, <clears throat> like nation nationality beef, um, and uh, so that was pretty huge. Uh, but yeah, back to back to this show. Since there isn't much information about um Selena's early life and you know the band's early career, um, this part is really really slow, um, and. While it is interesting and a lot of the performances are still really good, it's still a very well acted show and the actress who plays like childhood Selena is pretty great. And I, uh, if that's her real voice, kudos to her. Seriously, like she can really belt it. That was amazing. Um that's one of the things that I will like consistently praise this show on. The performances every time we see them are top notch. Really mm-hmm. enjoyed them. Um, of course, you know, in th- these early portions, we get introduced to her family. Um, we spend the most time with her dad. <laughs> and um, he's not necessarily like the Joe Jackson type, but he's pretty close. He's pretty I close. mean, there's definitely a lot of emotional abuse. Yeah, no, there's definitely a lot of emotional abuse. I mean, he makes poor AB like a uh, dumpster dive for those cans so they can make the stage mm-hmm. light. Uh, Which, so, um, I actually do recognize that actor. Oh, who played uh, young AB? No, who uh, played the dad. Oh, yeah? Where's he from? Uh, if you guys ever watched uh, Desperate Housewives, uh, he was the guy who was married to Eva Longoria. Oh shit. Huh. But yeah, um, so we kind of like we move through we move through like their young lives. And um one thing that I really like is we get to see 
a lot of the personality of Selena, like from early on mm-hmm. up into up until like he's uh, you know really getting bigger. And uh, one of the biggest things about her that makes her so endearing is that like you know she never felt like a star, right? Like, yes, she was a star. Obviously, she's got all the accolades, the amazing talent, and, like, you know, brilliant performances. But she never felt, like, out of touch, right? Like, if you ever watch any interviews or see any footage of, like, her, um, like, at meet and greets, you know, um, my my parents have been to, uh, my, been to a couple of those. And, like, that's still one of my favorite, my mom's favorite memories is, like, she she was the type of person that like would actually like you know hug her fans like she and like thank them and write personal messages in the signatures she, like she would not she wouldn't be the type to just have a stamp right like she would like talk to them for at least like mm-hmm. five five minutes at a time and be like so th- um you know thank you for coming you know what's your story like and she, she'd hear them out for a little bit and then you know obviously you have to keep the line moving she was apparently a really, really nice person, um, and and you know, you and it appears see... to be like mm-hmm. have big heart. And oh. if the show is to be believed, also some heavy insecurities. Yeah, which, which we can all relate to. Yeah, that's just definitely like a big thing. And you know, like like I said before, like her her racial identity is a, a big like a big factor in this, right? Because like, of course. You know, she lives in Texas um, and she's Mexican. And, you know, there are always a lot of assumptions when um, when you're Mexican. Um, and she doesn't like being put in that box. But at the same time, she doesn't want to, like, disregard her heritage, too, because she knows that's important. And that's all also a part of what makes her who she is. And um, finding that balance is kind of really the key to what makes her music so great. Right. I mean, yeah, people's heritage is a part of who they are, but it's not the only part. Exactly, and I mean that that's that's one of the that's one of the bigger things that you know she kind of like discovers and she leans into. And um, I also really loved, and I mean I love this part in any music biopic, but I really loved like um in the middle there when um she was starting to make like some of her iconic records and. Uh, <coughs> You know, it 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 would be this. Sorry, choking on some water. Um, I'm trying to stay hydrated. Um, but uh, yeah, so it would be like this moment where she she really wanted to go to the fabric store because obviously she, she uh, like one of her other big passions is uh, design, fashion, and clothing and stuff. She made all her like you know stage costumes and all the different things she would sew with her mom, and she loved to design, and um, she always was uh you know big on input when it came to like album covers and such um and so like she was uh messing around and joking she's like okay what if i sing this fast so i could get this over with and go to the store and she starts singing faster she, you know she does the she does the like the faster tone and uh picks up the tempo a little bit and ab's like wait a minute wait 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 wait, wait. do that again do that again and then it, you know, it, it becomes part of her like iconic sound, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's it's one of those it's one of those moments where you just like you get to see them like catch magic, and it's great. Um, um, I also really like the siblings, um, you know, as characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, A B um, and Suzette, you know, uh, Selena's two um, older siblings. And um, that's another probably one of my issues with the show. Just the minor issues is that I wish we uh, could have seen more of just them and their stories. Um, in particular, Suzette. I really like Suzette. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I wish she had gotten more screen time. Because uh, definitely, especially with her, her character, we go from... Oh... I hate drumming to the next episode she's full hog and yep. like trying to be a co-manager type person to help keep the 
the family, the band together, and it's like, uh, where did that change happen? Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a pretty big jump. Um, that's that's a that's again another one of the small problems that this show has. This show itself, like I said, it's not a bad show. I think it just kind of suffers from pacing issues at certain points because mm-hmm. um we're just missing a couple gaps. Um, and again, this might just be from lack of information or like you know just lack of time. Yeah. Right, so like I can't like fully blame uh, the creators for this one, uh, but yeah, I, I wish I wish we could have gotten more. Um, like Suzette, especially, we get a we get a lot from AB from even his small interactions. He gets a lot of personality, and I wish we we could have gotten more with his like family life because that was really interesting. Yes, um, yes, it was, and also one thing that they hinted upon, especially early on, but then they never really addressed again with him is uh. He possibly has OCD. Yeah, um, because it, because like, uh, it's like slow. It's hinted all throughout, like right, like he can't change diapers. He always wears gloves. He's very like particular about cleaning the baby's bottles and stuff. Um, and uh, also early earlier on, uh, when he's got to go to the award show for the first time, he keeps packaging his uh suitcase and over and over yep and reorganizing it and it's very organized yep yep but Um, they never really address it yeah um again i think it's just uh, another kind of like casualty of lack of screen time i think he's he's still more fleshed out than suzette which again i wish would uh she would have gotten more um because Mm -hmm. she she's kind the show kind of plays her like a sidekick almost yeah. Uh, like to Selena, which I feel like is unfair to her. Um, like, of course, like you can tell that she genuinely loved her sister, and there's none of that like stupid cliche drama of like her feeling like a second fiddle and uh, being jealous or whatever. You know, she's genuinely happy for her, and she's honestly the one who always encourages her to like push forward. It's like, no, no, you got this. You're going to be the one who wins that award. You're going to be best singer. Watch. It's going to be you. Don't worry about it. Uh, but, like, Suzette herself doesn't really get, like, as much screen time. I get it. The show is not called Suzette. It's called Selena. But, like, she's just as important. I feel like we could have cut mm-hmm. out a lot of the scenes with the dad. I, I Maybe just because I don't like him. But I feel like a lot of his scenes took away yeah. from stuff that we've seen from other people. Yeah, and... um. And uh, one of the side characters that I liked and would have liked to see more of is the only, like, main white person, Ricky, the keyboardist. Uh, Ricky's actually not white. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Ricky, Ricky no. helped, Ricky's the one that helped A.B. write all the Spanish songs. Shit, my bad. Uh, then the nerdy one. Yep, no, that's, yeah, that's Ricky. Because, uh, damn, I feel bad. I'm sorry, guys. But, anyway, uh, he was definitely a fellow nerd, and I liked his little nerd-isms. Like, uh, yeah, when... no, I, I, I loved all the small moments. I wish we could have gotten more of those. Like, Ricky yeah. uh, teaching Suzette to drive, um, drive stick. Yeah. I, I, it was fun. Um, and, like, you know, he you know, like... Mm-hmm. I was just gonna say when AB this like writes that song that he came up with in the shower, and then oh, he yeah, just and comes it... out with that random fact that the reason why we do a lot of good thinking in the shower is because it relieves pressure and the whole brain and everything, and he goes into like the science of it. Yeah, while while he's eating a big bucket of KFC chicken. <laughs> And I also like the little bit of attitude that they gave him because he wasn't even—he wasn't just like, "Oh, he's a nerd, so he's a meek milled nerd." No, uh, AB tells him to put down the chicken, and he's like, "I'll put down the chicken when you put on pants." Yep. No, I was—he was—he was a really good character. Um, 
somebody that I like that I know is going to be flushed out in part two. So I'm not really gonna like you know harp on too much. Uh, but I, I really did enjoy the actor. Is the actor who uh, you know showed up to play uh, Chris Perez, um, Selena's future husband. Um, I was mm-hmm. really looking forward to this um, because you know Chris and Selena, um, you know just from the J Lo movie itself, uh, you know one of my favorite stories, um, and they are super fucking cute in this. I'm not gonna lie. Um, mm-hmm. Um, so much so that I was, I was honestly upset, not just because of the, uh, because of the cliffhanger, but I was like, really? This is how we're going to do it? Like, I know it's how it, like, happened by accounts, but, like, really? That's, that doesn't make, that's so messed up. It doesn't uh, make any sense. Also, um, just, maybe this will be answered in part two or something, but, uh. I also thought the framing of that scene was very weird. Like, we cut to inside the diner, and it's just random people, and they're like, is that Selena? Is that yeah. Selena? And then we go to the scene? Yeah, it, that was a little like, weird. Um, what, 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 what else can we talk about? We don't want to just make this like a just a 30-minute episode. I mean, honestly, uh, there isn't as much to talk about, because this is a biopic story, so it's not like... We can really speculate on what's going to happen next, or I mean, I guess we can, but like we kind of know what's going to happen next because, again, it's a it's a person's actual life story. Um, I, I I will say that uh, one other small negative that I did mm-hmm. have mm-hmm. is like this was specially in um, there were nine episodes, so it was like in eight and nine. They kept making these like cheesy foreshadow lines of we're gonna be here always or yeah i mean be a star forever yeah and, that yeah those those, those were kind of corny um but and i mean i feel like that's kind of a trope that you like kind of put yourself into when you're doing a biopic about somebody who you know, does have a sudden tragic death. I know, but you don't um, have to keep like. Oh, I, I know. I know you don't have to lean into it. I I agree with you that it was overdone, <laughs> but uh, like. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I do, and it was still a good show. And uh, yeah, I I really enjoyed it. And like I said, um, I I don't remember I don't remember the actress's actual name. I always just refer to her as Susie Crabgrass. Um. <laughs> Uh, Brian, can you Google it for me? Um, but All yeah, right. I think she was absolutely amazing. Like, yeah, I was very, I was very hesitant at first because, I mean, especially given the shoes that she had to fill from mm-hmm. the la- last notable portrayal, not counting that bullshit Lifetime movie. Um, but uh. Yeah, those were some big shoes she had to fill, and boy, did she bring her A game! Like the look Indeed. is, uh, her look is pretty fantastic. It was they kept spot on. They kept cutting between like real footage and mm-hmm. and the show. Oh, which, I, I the love way, I, I love that. I, I love, love that. They that. The, I love that they like use the old like old school grainy camcorder. And but, the trans the transitions were really well done too. Like you could barely yeah, tell but... that. Mm-hmm. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say like you could barely tell that like th- that was actual footage. You you know if you weren't paying attention, you could have been like, oh, that's they just put a filter over like the the camera to make it look like old school camcorder. But no, that was actual footage. Um, yeah, because uh, you could tell the slight differences now. To their cred, there were slight, but so everyone looked on point, but at the same time, you could tell that it was actual footage. And uh, by the way, her name is Christian Ceratos. Oh, Christian Ceratos. Yeah, Christian Ceratos. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, in case you guys didn't know, I am painfully white. 
It's okay, Brian. It's okay. Um, another another thing that I really enjoyed about the show, um, which the J Lo, the J Lo one didn't lean into as much, um, because J Lo obviously has a very strong Bronx accent, so like that, that that's good. <laughs> That that's gonna come through, but Selena and her family are from Texas, and I loved that. Um, you said her name was Christian, or yeah. You said, okay, yeah. I, I just want to make sure. I love that Christian added like a southern accent to her. Like when she talked, she had like a southern accent. I was like, oh, that's cool, because like mm-hmm. you know. I, I was so used to the. I've, I've seen the J Lo version so many times that I could quote that movie. And uh, I was when I first heard it, I was like, "Wait, her accent is different." And I was like, "Oh no, shit! She grew up in Texas." Yes, and uh, I got to give her 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 cred. Um, when we like, uh, she was really good at subtle acting too, like. Uh, when that talk show host guy, mm-hmm. when he would like make fun of her Spanish, and yep. you could just see, yeah, you, yeah, you could see the, you, you, yeah, you could see the awkwardness. It's like the, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, like mm-hmm. she still kept the smile for the camera, but you could still see subtly her acting like a. Yeah, I'm keeping up the smile, but uh, I'm, I want to kick. I want to kick your ass, <laughs> like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, yeah, she definitely had the attitude. I, I really liked it. And again, one of the one of the best things about it is they really show her creativity. Uh, one of my favorite scenes, like towards the end, is when they're at the album release party, and um, you know. She comes in with her bedazzled jacket that, like, she wanted to wear mm-hmm. on the original album cover, but they said, no, that's not going to work. And, uh, you know, so, um, one, this random white girl comes up to her and she's like, oh, my God, I love your jacket. Where'd you get that? And she goes, oh, I actually, actually, I made it. Um, and she's like, oh, really? And then, she, you know, she's like, yeah, you know, um, and then she's like, you know, if you give me your measurements, I could, you know, I could definitely try and make you one. And she's like, oh, that'd be great. And then she's um, she's like, so who do you work for? She goes, oh, that's me. And she she points to the speaker. She goes, oh, oh my, that's you from the cover. She goes, yeah, it's not really my thing. Yeah, cause uh, I don't know. This was probably a thing of the time, cause uh, America was very racist back then. I mean, it still is kind of now, but. Even more so back then, so I'm inclined to believe that that actually happened. But oh, that, oh, 100%. 100%. Whole, that whole scene with the photo shoot and keep saying international, that was so awkward and oh, made yeah. me want to punch I, a couple different people. And I mean, like the fact, like also the fact that you know, her dad, one of his biggest things, and of course one of Selena's biggest things, is she wanted to make an English record. Because yeah. at the end of the at the end of the day, like you know, as much as of course she looked to some of the Tejano stars for like inspiration and stuff, who she really wanted to be was somebody like Janet or Paula, right? Like, mm-hmm. and to her father's credit, she kept pushing it since she was a kid, mm-hmm. and he always said, "You gotta wait for the right time. You gotta wait for the right time." But when, and to his cred, when he thought it was the right time, he pushed hard. He fought for it. Also, I really appreciate the dad being like, hey, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. She just turned 18. We ain't having a dress like this. Back up. Back up, buddy. We ain't doing that. Yeah, what the hell is on her head? We gotta, we gotta, we gotta tone this down a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, uh, those moments, those were some of the few moments where I actually liked her dad. I mean, not mm-hmm. to say that her dad's a bad guy, um, he, but he is clearly one of those stage dads that's like vicariously living out his dream through his kids. I mean, uh, isn't, isn't Selena Eli Delos? 
uh, uh, Selena y, y los Dinos, yeah. Uh, yeah, los Dinos. Los Dinos. Yeah. Yeah, Los Dinos was uh, his dad's original band. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so he's trying, so he's definitely trying to live vicariously through that. Mm-hmm. But, but he, yeah. He, also, he, was so, he was so mad when they tried to get rid of the uh, Los Dinos part of the band. She's like, they're like, no, no, mm-hmm. no, no, no. We're not getting rid of the band. We're just going to call it Selena. Because think about it. Think about it marketing wise. When you, when you think about, like Gloria Estefan, you don't think of Gloria Estefan and her like her band's name. It's just Gloria Estefan, um, or like Enrique Iglesias, or fucking oh, you know, or or Madonna. Yep. Cher. Or, yep. One but, word. One word name were very poppy back in those days. Um, yeah. Hell, they're still poppy now. Um, and also, I know we talk negative about the dead, but one of the things. That was unnecessary, but I still liked was the like couple times that they flash back to when the dad and the mom were young. Mm-hmm. I, I think I think it was important to like kind of showcase that you know he did have dreams and like uh, the, that's the whole reason he's so driven to the point where he's kind of an asshole. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, by the way, uh, for all the time that they hone on the dad. We yeah, the mom is the mom is barely the there. Mom. Yeah, exactly. She's, <laughs> she's literally a background character, and it's sad. Yeah, she makes the clothes. She helps organize. You know, she hugs the dad and comforts him when he's having his little fits and panic attacks. Mm-hmm. But like, she's not really. She's not even really a character, and that's kind of sad. Um, it is, and it's true. Um, but. Yeah, I also like how uh, they portrayed being on the road. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and 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 I, you know, again, I appreciate the dad for like, you know, his his, you know, kind of strict rules. He goes, "All right, uh, do y'all know what happens if I ever catch you um, doing drugs or um, anything crazy like that." It's like well, you're, you're gonna fire us. He goes, "Wrong." I'm gonna kick your ass, and then whatever's left, I'm gonna fire. Then I'm gonna fire. And, and if you're alive, I'm gonna fire you. <laughs> yep. But, right. but yeah, and uh, I really like the scene where uh, the mom finally convinces him to get some heating. Yep. So he puts that little like gas fireplace thing inside the bus, but then Ricky reads it, and he's like. Not to be in closed spaces, and they're like, "What?" He's like, "It clearly says that." They're like, "Dead," and then they all rush out. Yep, and I um I also really like the scene where I um like this also let me like earn some respect for the dad is when um I forget his name, but their original guitarist um uh, he's like mm-hmm. uh, you know he has a kid now, and um you know. His wife is sick and, like, you know, the, the baby needs to be taken care of. And, like, you know, his wife keeps calling while they're on this important tour. And he's like, hey, man, look, I got to take care of my family. I know this is important to you guys. And I, I feel so bad for letting you guys down. But I got to go. And he, he point and when he's talking to A.B., who also understands, yep. he points to the bus and he's like, that's your family. I need to go home and deal with mine. Mm-hmm. Be with mine. Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was a really good moment, and of course, that also like foreshadows like AB's like you know later stint into fatherhood as well. Um, and of course, that also mm-hmm. introduces us to Chris. Um, I do like that. Also, there's like um, they do show like kind of a bit of the uh, inner turmoil, like when uh, Pete decides to go solo. Obviously, you know one of the um, other like the main male singer for the band yeah he gets a solo deal with their same label and um you know he's like you know it's not that i'm like i'm not trying to just leave you guys high and dry i want i want i still want to be part of this i still want to work with you guys and i still want you to produce my album it's just this is a big opportunity for me man like you gotta understand but of course like AB, like, he feels, like, kind of abandoned, right? Because, like, they've been with them for so long, and you're just going to, you know, 
he feels like you know you're just gonna dip and uh well also well also uh he's his riding mate and the dad had been at that time putting even more pressure on ab to get platinum yep and so he blew up and left and then blew up to selena yep took it out on her mm-hmm and then, because also this is the part where he where he ends up finding out about Chris, and it's just like, well, shit, you know, if Dad finds out about this, he's gonna start blaming me, and then it's just all gonna fall apart, and it's gonna be because of you, you did this, and it's like it's there's some real tension there, and it's just like, oh damn, oh damn, Which is why yeah. it felt really awkward to end at the place that they did because they did such a good job at <laughs> building up that drama, and they kind of, they literally end in the middle of it, and it's just like, huh? Yeah, they it, the way that it ended just felt like it's a cliffhanger, and I recognize that it's a cliffhanger, but also I feel kind of underwhelmed and it was like an anti-climax ending yeah like you know what it felt like to me it felt like the cliffhanger that you have before you go to commercial not like a cliffhanger you have when you end a season right yeah like also it felt like the cliffhanger for like uh tune in next week that's what i'm saying that's what i'm goes. saying yeah it felt like a commercial or like a episode stinger, not an actual like full mid-season cliffhanger. Like, maybe we're just spoiled with like, I, I know a lot of people talk shit about the CW, but maybe we're just spoiled with the CW, because the CW and their mid-season finales, and finales for the most part, those cliffhangers are insane. I mean, uh, we've been um, we've even been critical about a couple of them, including shows like Legends, mm -hmm. where they're, like, mid-season will be more climactic than Selena, and we still give them crap because it's not as big as we're used to. Yeah, like, and, you know, it's not like they couldn't do a big, like, climax, and I'm not saying it has to be something, like, super bombastic or epic, but, like, they literally end it with, like, them breaking, like, breaking them up like they didn't do they didn't even like end it with like you know Chris driving off forlorn and Selena looking out the window and shit they just kind of like broke them up and then cut the episode she was like you know she she, all, she, she all, looks out the window for a split second and then boom yep yeah, that that's it like we didn't we didn't even get like you know Chris driving off um, or any like any of the letters that he sent to her in secret like I know that's part, that's gonna what they're gonna do in part two. Um. Also, one final complaint that I uh, I want to kind of like talk about with the show. I'm telling you guys, I do actually like it. I just want to I want to make that perfectly clear. I do like this show. Um, mm -hmm. But Same. one final complaint that I have is that towards the end or like the the like the last portion of the um episode, I want to say like it was in like episode six or something like that. Uh, we end up seeing, um, of course, Suzette, who's kind of like the secondary manager of the band, uh, making a phone call because she's like, okay, we're a little overwhelmed with all this stuff with merch and all this other stuff. We need help. So she calls somebody. And she calls somebody who um, turns out to be a volunteer. Very, very big fan. And she, they, want, they need somebody to volunteer um, to be the head of Selena's fan club. And um, if you know Selena's story, you know who the person is, and uh, you, you know where it's going. Because apparently the record label demanded that she have a fan club. Which, you know, it was a big thing back in those days, right? Like, uh, I remember even in the night, even in, like, the, like, early 2000s, I, uh, me and my sister signed up for the NSYNC fan club. We got a, cal well, we got a calendar, a signed mm -hmm. CD, poster. I'm, I mean, also back in the day, you got to think because this was before internet. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, and, so, uh, yeah, before... social media, yeah, social media didn't exist. So like, this was the this is how you were able to connect with your favorite band. 
and also and also those favorite bands would also get like hundreds of handwritten letters. Yep. Yep. We definitely and we definitely sent it. And there needed to be some way to manage all those letters. So typically an official fan club would help handle those letters. Yep. Yep. Oh, oh, yep. I, I definitely had my sister write a couple of letters to Justin. Not gonna lie. <laughs> hey, listen, man. He will always and forever be my favorite, and he's still one of the best to this day. Well, I mean, you know my favorite. Well, I mean, yeah, Joey's hella underrated. Joey's hella underrated. Um, well, also... He- He's a big nerd that everybody underestimates, so yeah, of course. I... Joey's hella underrated. But anyways, um, wrong pop stars. Uh, back to Selena. Uh, but yeah, so it looks like they're giving Yolanda a plot line, and I'm just like, oh, this is gross. Don't tell me you're going to try to symp- like make us sympathize with fucking her murderer. Also, um, I, I get you, yeah. Don't do that. And, but and also, also, and also uh, that, that line at the end, the, like you want to talk about like kind of cheesy, cringy foreshadowing when they had that phone call. And at the end, she's like, of course, I'd like to help. You know, Selena's, um, you know, Selena's not just a star. You know, she's just like us, just like me. And I'm just like, oh, God. Oh, 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 no. Yeah, that that's kind of, that was bad. And also, uh. Please don't make us sympathize with her. Um, yeah, like she and, she definitely uh, gave me like catch her in the rye, like fucking give John Lennon the book and then shoot him type vibes. Like it, it was it was wild, but also you made me think about another subplot which I at the same time liked. But also didn't understand why it was there. Okay. The the random Mexican teenager who was a big fan of Suzette. Oh yeah. Early on. Uh huh. Where we cut to her and her family life, and it just ended at the end of the episode. And I mean, I like. Suzette, so I really like that moment for her, but at the same time... It kind of just came out of nowhere, yeah. Why was that subplot there? Yeah, like, I, yeah, he that, that, that was the kid who, like, called her dad to ask her on a date, right? No. That was the girl that she gave her, uh, her, uh, drumsticks to the first time that they went to Mexico. Oh, right, right, right. The one that wanted to be be a drummer just like her. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that was just... I guess it was there to show, like, more development for Suzette. To show that, you know, people love Suzette, too. Which, again, it's great. Because Suzette is great. But, yeah, it does kind of just feel out of place. Uh, given, like... When that time could have been given to Suzette. And we could see more of Suzette. Oh, yeah. But then again, like... Yeah, because like you said, yeah, because at first I thought that I thought that random little girl was gonna end up being like a younger version of like Yolanda, but wait a minute, that age doesn't line up. Yeah, yeah, I was like, but the age doesn't yeah, line up. Same. That's weird. And then it's just like, okay, that's cool. You're a fan of Suzette, but why? Why are we spending a whole like portion of the episode where we get to see you as a kid sneaking into the show? I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I liked it for Suzette. Yeah, yeah, exactly, but, exactly. But because that moment where where she gives her the drumsticks and the dad sees it and it's like approving that not that his other daughter is getting some cred um, was really cool. But the whole leading up to that, I didn't really understand why that was. Yeah, really yeah, that was unnecessary. They could have honestly just shown the scene of her like praising Suzette and then getting the drumsticks. They didn't need to have that whole little adventure of her, like, sneak, uh, like, not being allowed to go to the concert because she has chores and sneaking off and then making it to, like, finding, making it to the front of the stage. Finding out that, 
Mm-hmm. Finding out that uh, just like when Selena was young, uh, her parents own a restaurant. Yep. And she has a brother too, apparently. And uh, we find out a lot about her life yeah, story. But we, but, like, who is this random? And, and we never see her again. I, I thought she was going to be like a backup drummer yeah. or something like later on. We never see her again. Yeah. She's just kind of random little girl fan. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I totally agree with you on that one. Yeah, no, that's, I, I honestly, but, until you mentioned it, I completely forgot that that was a thing. But yeah, um, back to the like, positives, though. Mm. As a like self-proclaimed very white person who uh, doesn't really have the cultural connection to the music, I still really enjoyed all the music. It, 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 yeah, I was, just... was going to say, you don't need a cultural connection because this shit just slaps. You can't deny it. This shit, yeah, yeah this is a, like bops, like back and forth. You don't need to speak a lick of Spanish to un, like to know that this is good shit. Um, and also credit to the, to the show, it wasn't just Selena's music oh, that was the good. The stage, perform- the the music- stage performances were amazing. I mean that too. Yo. But I just meant like the like the like uh songs that they would use like in transitions and stuff in the background was also mm-hmm. good too. Yep. Also, like they open up on the big concert in ninety four and that opening scene that had me hooked. I was like, Oh shit, if it's gonna be like this Mm-hmm. I still haven't heard my absolute favorite song yet, but uh, we'll hopefully we'll get hopefully we'll get there in part two. Hopefully we'll get there in part two. Um, it's a it's a song it's, and, uh, a, it's a song that I often associate with cleaning the house because it's a, it's the song that we play on the day where we would clean the house. Um, <laughs> um, cool, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to cover part two. Yeah, I know that. Um... <clears throat> I know that 2021 is going to be a big year, especially for Marvel. Oh, yeah. Uh, dude, like, honestly, like, you know, I'm <coughs> I'm on, like, the tail end of this cold. And, I mean, I'm, like, 95% better. But, like, I, w- I thought about it and I was like, mm, uh, I, I got better in the middle of the week. And I was like, eh. I might as well take the rest of the week off. And then they drop all those trailers. And I was like, well, shit. Well, I'm still going to take the week. I'm going to still take the rest of this week off. I don't care. But damn, that's a lot of stuff coming. Well, up. Uh, well uh, as far as Marvel goes, though, honestly, there's only three trailers that you need to like uh, pay attention to. Mm-hmm. The rest were... Uh, the rest were like sizzle reels and, and just like straight up announcements. Yeah, where the, it was the, just the, yeah, five, five years. Yeah, the Miss Marvel one was a standing teaser. there. Announcing. Yeah, the Miss Marvel one was a teaser, right? Um, I know that one was a teaser. Loki was also a teaser. Um, uh, Miss Marvel is just a sizzle reel. Oh, okay, then that's not super important. Uh, yeah, yeah, I thought about reacting to it too because I actually did react to Loki and. Falcon and Winter Soldier on my channel. Oh, oh, yep, uh, yep. Which of uh, the weird, the weird thing is, is uh, I also reacted to the trailer for the Wings Club Netflix adaptation oh, trailer. Quick question, real quick. I mean, I, I know this is technically more into like the plug area, but I mean, we're almost, we're pretty much almost done with this, and uh, you know, yeah. Uh, but uh, so real quick. Um, I already reacted to the first WandaVision trailer. Is there anything worth, um, like, is it worth doing a reaction to this new one? Or is it just mo- most of the same stuff? I don't know. I skipped it because I was like, I've seen one and I want to be surprised for the rest. Yeah, no, okay. So I know I'm going to watch Yeah, so it. I'll probably skip it. I'll probably skip it. Um, but uh, if you are going to react to anything, i suggest... If you hadn't seen it already, uh, Loki, Falcon, Winter Soldier, and what? Yeah, if. those were the ones I was planning on doing. Um, also, uh, 
also, yeah, you guys are just going to hear our planning session right now real quick. Uh, but I was just going to say uh, real quick to finish what I was saying. Uh -huh. I also, in that same like 24-hour stint, uh, reacted to the Wings Club Netflix adaptation. Oh, yeah, I, I did see that pop and, up. Uh, I did see that pop up in my notes. And, uh, dude, mm -hmm. dude, uh, it's the best out of the. Th it's doing the best out of the three. It's I, like it's beating the Mar. It's beating just, the Marvel ones. Wow. It's like in the three digits. Nice. But uh, yeah, it was like YouTube. You never really predict when you upload things, but but yeah. No, that that is, you were yeah, saying it's the best. Uh. Yeah, but what I, what I was saying, what I was saying was, um, and I, I, you know, like listening to this, don't mind that we we're just kind of off on a tangent, but like discuss like video stuff real quick. Uh, but real quick, um, and so, uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, what if I might do the Wings Club one, one too, because it did look interesting, and I, I love the original show, uh, so. Definitely, definitely gonna check that one out. Was there anything on H A S uh, uh, H S M T M T S? That's technically a Disney Plus show. Nothing. Uh the the holiday special was released. Oh, it's out. Like it's out. It came out the eleventh. Oh shit! Yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Oh damn! Oh damn! High School Musical: The Musical: The Series. Oh, I gotta do that. Yeah. Uh, that came out yesterday, the holiday special. Nice. And, and yeah, um, as, as far as Marvel goes, that's all. Uh, just, the rest were just announcements. What about the, what about the Star Wars shit? I saw the Ahsoka announcement. Um, there's no, there's nothing actually behind that, right? Um, I, uh, the only, like, actual, like, footage, footage thing that they revealed. It's shit from it's, was, shit, uh, it's a little shit from uh, Mando, right? Can I, I? I mean, I. I... No, <laughs> no. Uh, they reveal they revealed a sizzle reel for uh, for Andor. Okay, and then be... Cassian Andor, mm -hmm. and then show. and then bad and then the Bad Batch. Is that just a teaser? The Bad Batch trailer. Okay, that's a full. It's a full on trailer. It's a full trailer. Nice. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, I might do those too. Um, all right, cool. So yeah, that, that's our a bit of our planning and plug section. So I guess final thoughts with Selena. I'm sorry for the tangent, you guys. Yeah, sorry. We really didn't, we really didn't have much else to talk about with the show, I guess, and we kind of wanted to fill time to make sure you guys at least got a full hour. We didn't want to make this a, like a super short show. Yeah. Um, overall, um, I had some minor issues with it, but I still really enjoyed it and. Uh, I think that they did most, for the most part, they did the best with what they had. Yeah, especially, especially considering, a lot, you know, like we said earlier, that there isn't really much information about, like, the, like, early era. So, like, the fact that they kind of, like, you know, didn't really have much to work with, but still were able to come out with that, still pretty solid. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, this sounds weird to say, but, uh, I really did like the characters because they're real people, and so it seems yeah, weird yeah. to say characters. Oh yeah, but, no, uh, I feel that. I feel that the the actors did a really good job, and it's, yeah, it's sound department well was awesome. Show. Yeah, it's a very well acted show. Um, and the, the sound department all was great. awesome. Mm -hmm. All the performances were great. Uh, my God, uh, I, I part one, I think was good but i think part two is going to be what really um makes or breaks this show yes uh, um, especially with like how long part two is because uh i don't know how much they, longer yeah i was gonna say go. how long are they gonna, yeah, exactly how long are they gonna extend it because like you already did nine episodes is this yeah. really gonna be like so is it gonna be like another nine because like there isn't much left. You're already in the early nineties, dude. Like I feel like dude. they could have they could have just boosted it to thirteen and yeah, done told a one the whole story. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's my but, that that 
the only major problem I had uh, with this. Like, I don't, we don't normally give ratings, but like, just to kind of quantify how I'm feeling here, uh, I would, I, I was originally going to give this an eight until the ending. Um, uh, then it bumped it down to a seven because I feel like all those minor issues piled up enough to deduct it a point from my original score. Um, yeah, I I feel you. Um, I'd probably give it like uh, in because we don't normally do this. My brain is going to uh, like the school system with the letters. No, yeah, I feel that. And uh, honestly, I'd probably give this a B minus. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I would, I would, yeah, I would say like if I so uh, to give you a like a, a number grade, I'd give it a seven out of ten. Letter grade, yeah, I'd probably give this like a solid B, maybe a B minus, considering like a lot of the uh, minor issues that we you know discussed in uh, in here. Um, yeah, I but, agree with you. But yeah, um, definitely looking forward to the next part. Um, obviously, it's going to be the big stab. Um, mm -hmm. But I I'm ready for it. Uh, yeah, I'm honestly not, but I'm going to try to be. Um, but yeah, it, it, um, I think Netflix has done a solid job. Um, I was I, I was talking to my sister about this like the whole time, and she's she's very very nervous about watching it. She watched the first episode, and she was like, "I don't know, you're gonna watch it and then tell me if it's good," because like I get uh, you know I, we grew up on this shit, and like as a movie, we've seen so many times. Like also, so... it what it was a little it was a little interesting. And uh, maybe a little worrisome that the first episode, we don't even get into her teen years. Yeah, that was a little weird. That was a little weird. Also, um, speaking of just weird pacing, why did they have that little little bit in high school? Like, why didn't we get a little bit more of that? I wanted more of that. Maybe that's just me and my, my like, love for teen. Um, maybe that's just me and my be... love for teen shows, but, like, I wanted more of that. Yeah, and I could be wrong, but... Uh... The best friend from high school seemed like a familiar face. She did look very familiar. Uh huh. So uh, I thought maybe she'd have a bigger role than just the one scene. Yep. But also, they put a lot of emphasis on her high school crush, which didn't and that go went anywhere. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> absolutely nowhere. <laughs> like, but but yeah, like we said, I did really enjoy it overall, and. Uh, can't wait for part two. Yeah, hopefully part two doesn't like waste as much time as part one did. I feel like part one had a lot of filler because there wasn't as much information on her early life. So like, because uh, like yeah. you can tell you can tell that things really picked up once they started like when they hit her teen years and she started going on like tour and stuff. That's when stuff when like the show really started kicking and it got mm -hmm. really good. So, like, mm -hmm. now that we're, like, in that full swing, I feel like we'll, we'll really get to that moment. Um, and um, I would honestly like to see at least a little bit of, like, not necessarily, like, an aftermath per se, but I would like to see, like, kind of, like, maybe, and I guess this would be a little bit of speculation after all, um, I would like to see maybe, like, after her death, we kind of get maybe like an episode or two of just kind of the aftermath and the impact of Selena and her legacy. You know what I'm saying? Not just yeah. on, not just on her fans, but like we thought this will be the finally the time where we get to see like Suzette have her time to shine and AB and Ricky. Cause and uh, I look, I looked into it and uh, AB had a really like a uh, big career even after her death. Yeah, he was huge. Yeah. I mean, but, he still is. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, so that would be really cool to see. And uh, yeah. also, I just want to, I meant to point this out earlier, but I just wanted to say, uh, like, we were talking about, like, how the acting goes. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, uh, a good chunk of the actors, like Ricky... This is like their first big thing. Yeah, no, and, and like you would not be able to tell. They're they're all really good. Like, yeah, some of the dialogue is cheesy, but that's not on them. Like that that's yeah. on the writers. Yeah. 
and uh, it could be tight. It could be tightened up a few places here and there, but I think they still did a really good job. And uh, yeah, I, I think as long as they fix the pacing issue in part two, um, I think it'll be end up overall being a fantastic show. Like indeed, uh, that that grade will definitely go up next time. Honestly, I kind of like I kind of like throwing in ratings now. <laughs> it's it's a little bit more fun. Um, yeah, I get you. Um, and for the YouTube crowd that might not know, uh, there is a hidden episode, audio only, of us talking about the movie, Jingle Jangle. Oh, yeah, Jingle Jangle. Jangle. Yeah, sorry about that. That was just kind of a, a miscommunication. Our, our audio did not get sent to the proper Dropbox so Brian could upload it. That was my bad. That was on me. Uh. But if you want to watch, if you want to listen to that episode, because honestly, that episode didn't get that many listens uh, on uh, uh, on iTunes, Spotify, and such, uh, you can go to your local. Um, I was about to say your local podcasting platform, but your your you know audio listening platform of choice, and I'm sure you can find it. Just search Channel Chasers, and you will see the uh, Movie Night episode. If you're wondering why the numbering is off, and it's like, wait, uh, that's did you guys skip an episode? No, we didn't. It's just that we didn't put it on YouTube. I apologize. Which is, which is speaking of, this will be a good transition to plugs. Yep. The next, the next time you will hear us will be in twenty twenty one. Yep, and we will be. Uh, it'll be a movie night, and we're going to be talking about something pretty huge, something pretty wondrous. Uh. That also took place in the 80s. Yep. So that's going to be exciting. We're going to be talking Wonder Woman 84, um, courtesy of HBO Max. Um, Mm -hmm. Thank God. Um, And uh, yeah, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Obviously, the holiday season is coming up. So uh, we're, we're taking a break. And I know it's like, but guys, you haven't really put up anything that much. Yeah, again, my bad. Sorry, I was sick. Uh, I wish we could have done more, but uh, that's just how the gingerbread cookie crumbles, man. Um, holidays are coming up, uh, so so is so is life. Um, I mean, that's honestly a good like analogy to twenty twenty as a whole. Yeah, I'll be glad when it's over, and I'm looking forward twenty twenty one. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, Brian, uh, you, this is actually the first time in a long time, but uh, you have a lot more stuff to plug than me. So I'll uh, go ahead, Brian. Do your thing. Well, well uh, if we talk about – I've uh, started to, like, add reactions back to my channel because I used to do it back in the day. Mm-hmm. And um, I've started adding them. First, it was with the Doctor Who holiday – special coming up for for new year's which i will cover on my channel nice and uh and uh, then i saw the wings trailer and i was like okay i liked the old show so i'll react to the new one and then right as it was processing i started looking and it's like marvel trailers and i was like oh shit well damn i guess i gotta react to that too and so I reacted to the two big ones and and the two new ones that we hadn't seen any footage for before. And then, yeah, then, uh, boom, it's the same day as Mandalorian, so, uh, review that. And, and, uh, so I did. It was the penultimate episode. And, uh, yeah. The next video coming on my channel will, unless somebody decides to, like, drop something else big in the meantime, will be the finale for Mandalorian, which I'm not going to spoil because Jay hadn't seen it, but it's ramping up to be big. I mean, I, I, I cannot wait. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, Mandalorian was one of those ones for me personally, like, 
the views didn't do nearly as well as my network shows and like Fridays always ended up being busy for me in terms of like Twitch stuff. So Twitch stuff and I, I now started hosting my games on Fridays to give our buddy um an open Sunday week so like he wouldn't be like out of the rotation for too long. So like Fridays has have become a busy day for me. Uh so because uh, it doesn't, it didn't get as many views. I was just like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm gonna just wait. I'm gonna just wait till the season's over. Do one video then. Uh, but yeah, that transitions into me. So, um, since Brian told me that High School Musical, the musical, the series holiday special is out, uh, I will be reviewing that because I fucking love that show. Same. Um, so one of my favorites, and it was one of our first, uh, it was one of our first, like, podcast versions of uh, CC, and it did very well. Um, Indeed. And back in the, ba- like, back when my, the days of my original channel, that first episode, honestly, every episode of that show mm-hmm. blew the fuck up. Um, so, like, it's kind of expected of me to do it, and again, I fucking love that show, so. Of course I'm going to do it. Shit, you're right. I probably should jump on that myself. Yeah, man. Like that, that, <laughs> Now that you mention it. Yeah, you got you to do it. Because not only is it for the views, but you actually like love the show. It's pretty fucking great. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be doing that. Uh, I did do a review of the Euphoria special, uh, the, the Rue episode, which Say- is by far one of the uh, best single episodes of TV I've seen all year. Um, Same, and definitely, like, one of, if not the best, like, uh, bottle bottle episodes. episodes. Yeah, 100%. Which, if you're you're a TV fan, you know what that means. Yep. Uh, Which, I'm assuming, if you spent 72 minutes listening to us talk about Selena and our video planning schedule, that you are at least a TV fan, if not a fan of us. So check out both of our reviews of that episode. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, of course, when all my network shows come back, I will be reviewing those again. This is us, a million little things. Uh, I will finish up a teacher. Uh, I've been skipping out on <laughs> on that, but I have been watching, and it's going to be uh, very interesting to see how it ends. Um, it's been pretty great. Uh, so we're going to do that, and of course. When January comes around, the CW shows are back, and so I'm going to be mm-hmm. busting my ass once again. Um, so I, I will have no excuses. You'll get, like, a plethora of content from me once the CW shows are back. Um, so, yeah, definitely look forward to that. Uh, if you want to keep up with me just uh, in the regular during this YouTube hiatus, I will still be active on Twitch. So definitely check those out. Uh, I, I stream normally around 4 p.m. EST. Links are in the description down below. And of course, check out Brian's cha- YouTube channel as well. Links to his channel are in the description uh, for Thank new you. YouTube people. And in the show notes for anybody listening to this on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever else. So yeah, um, happy holidays. Uh, we hope you guys have a great one. We'll see you next year. Whatever you celebrate. Yep. We'll see you next year. Until then, peace.